Well, hello, welcome. This video is about some of the famous people that I've met. A lot of them rock stars. Some of my encounters are funny, some of them are quite scary, and some are quite sad. Mm. Are you interested in hearing about when I met Frank Sinatra? Stick to the end and I'll tell you. Not that I'm like big friends with all the stars. I've been involved in entertainment for nearly 50 years now. You tend to meet people and even though they haven't got a clue who I am and I don't often know who they are to be honest with you. I once met some members of KISS uh, and I still wouldn't. I, I know one is called Gene somewhere or other. Who's the first one? Ringo Starr. <laughs> I mentioned the time I met Ringo Starr because I posted it on a video and somebody asked me whether I'd met all the Beatles and my answer was I'd met all of them apart from John Lennon and I went on to list where I'd seen the rest of them. So I'll put a link in up there, link into that. There's lots of other questions too so you might not want to get too involved in it. I couldn't remember where it was but I've thought about it and I think it was the Hilton Hotel in Park Lane. And I was interviewing somebody in one of the rooms upstairs. I should explain that at the time I was working for Time Out magazine, I worked for them for quite a long time in the 90s and early noughties. I can remember that I had a few drinks and I get in the lift and I somehow end up in the basement, which is a bit weird. And then I basically press the G for ground, go up, I'm on my phone, doors open, this group of large men enter, all in suits and things. A bit weird going to a lift in a hotel with dark glasses, but I didn't say anything. And they just press the button and go up to the I think it was the top floor, maybe the Contiki bar. Was that the top floor? I can't remember. So anyway, we're going up this hotel and I um, take the opportunity to look. And in the center of this group of people, by far the shortest one, there's a guy who looks vaguely familiar wearing dark glasses. A ping, it's Ringo Starr. So I, being a bit drunk, in the last video said didn't say anything, but in retrospect, I did. I said, hello, Ringo. And to prove it was Ringo, he said something like, Peace and love. And then the doors opened and off he went. And that was my encounter with Ringo Starr. You see, these are so interesting, aren't they? But you can't wait for Frank Sinatra at the end, can you? That is a humdinger, let me tell you, humdinger. Can I just pause there for a sec and say that if you like this, please like it. If you don't like it, I don't know why you're even watching it still. Comment, let me know what you think. It'd be nice though, I mean, don't, don't, don't be horrible. And subscribe, press the notification bell. Right, back to the intriguing stories from my past. Who's next? Chuck Berry. Without Chuck Berry, there wouldn't have been the Beatles, there wouldn't have been the Rolling Stones, and so many, many more. But how did I meet Chuck Berry? I was putting him on at the 100 Club in London, in Oxford Street. It was Easter Sunday, 2008. Now, of course, why would you put Chuck Berry on at a small club like the 100 Club, rather than playing at a much bigger venue? The answer was because I specialised in putting on shows for people, and I was charging a premium price so people could see Chuck Berry close up in a club. Where I think is where these rock and roll stars should be seen and we sold out very quickly. Part of the deal was that you get him a car for him and his son to drive around in. Now of course they don't give you things like driving license details and things like that and obviously nobody would rent me a S-Class Mercedes but if for some unknown person possibly without the driving license to drive. So I had to go to the Russian Mafia. There you go. I've told everyone now we picked up the cars at Heathrow Airport and these big guys came and I gave them an envelope with £5,000 in and they basically made it plain they knew where I lived. And so um, Chuck Berry and his um, son and band arrived at Heathrow Airport and I met them. I was in a separate vehicle with Paul Mitchell, my security man who was driving me around that day. And we took them to the Five Star Sanderson Hotel just around the corner from the 100 Club where they were installed. Charles Berry Jr, his son, and the rest of the band were tired after their long flight. I think they came from Russia, so they went to bed, but Chuck Berry wanted breakfast. I wanted breakfast, so I took him to the breakfast room and we had a little chat. And on the way, I was rabbiting away, saying how pleased I was, such a man of his stature, and thank you so much for coming to do this show at the small venue like the 100 Club. After a while, he sat down and turned around to me and said, Look, I ought to tell you, I'm totally deaf in that ear. I can't hear a word you're saying. Talk to me in that ear. Now, I might have got the ears wrong, I can't remember, because I was also quite tired. And so we sat there, and I think he ate some muffins don't 
quote me on that. And I drank a cup of coffee, which turned out to be the most expensive cup of coffee I've ever had, because um, I was charged for a full breakfast, which was £32, which is fine. I mean, the chance to talk to Chuck Berry for probably an hour. We talked about lots of things, actually. I don't want to appear arrogant, but I think we got on quite well. Now, a lot of people say that they didn't get on with him, which I find very hard to work out, because I had absolute... They were the nicest people I've ever worked with, and I think it's down to respect. You show somebody respect, and they show a bit of respect back, no matter who they are. A fantastic man. May he rest in peace. And I will be forever grateful for that short time I spent in his company. Few people become legends in their own lifetime, win an Academy Award, numerous other awards, and countless golden discs. How many of us in the audience have a favorite Sinatra number? How about me meeting Frank Sinatra? That's an interesting one. It starts off, believe it or not, in the Marquee Club in Wardour Street. Because at the time, this is the mid to late 70s, I used to book punk bands for various venues and I was used to go to the Marquee quite a lot. And punk was just starting up, really. The Marquee was always known as a hard rock place, but they soon, they were basically very keen to get into a, any sort of new fad and any new thing. And at the time, punk was seen as a new fad. Who would thought to this day that they'd still be doing punk shows at Crystal Palace Bowl? And I, used, and I got into this little clique at the marquee of various people. One of them was this music publisher called Mike, and he worked for a big publishing company in London's West End. We, we were going out for uh, to watch a band. I'm thinking Johnny Thunders or Ming Deville. I meeted him at his place of work. After hours, and he's just on the phone and finishing off, and I'm in the reception reading Music Week because it's it was too expensive for a poor person, even though I was in the music business, to buy. So I used to read it when I went to places like that. So I'm reading Music Week, and this big car pulls up outside, and all these guys get out of it, and I'm sitting looking at them, and they look like, literally look like some mafia guys, basically. Big mafia guys. And then another car comes, and the same sort of thing happens, and they all walk into this reception, and, they all, and they're all talking a few f feet away, and I can hear they're all got New York and New Jersey accents exactly like in The Godfather. If they're not in the Mafia, I don't know who they are, basically. And then another car, to the door slam, and, and this guy comes in, much smaller guy, wearing dark glasses. I'm thinking, he looks very familiar. He comes in, they have a chat, ha ha ha, big joke, whatever. They look at me, they just realise I don't really matter at all. Blah, 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 gone. A few minutes later, Mike comes out and says, oh, no, Jim, da, da. did you meet Frank? And I'm thinking, what, Frank Nitty, was it? Was that what it was? And I'm thinking, all these Frank Gotti, is that even a person? I don't know. And I said, Frank? And he goes, Frank Sinatra, that was, that was Frank Sinatra. Where he's British publishers. So there you go, almost met Frank Sinatra. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to watch more of this sort of stuff, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, and um, like, definitely like it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>